Hey, everybody. Welcome to the Glass Blown Open, presented by Dynamic Discs and the Pedaga. Oh, PDGA. That's the PDGA, actually. Yes. You're watching Joe Mez Pro. I am AJ Risley. Some people call me Loose Cannon, and I'm joined by the one and only Robert McCall. Hello. All right. There he is. We got Simon Lazat on the card oh, today. Oh, yeah. Just a great card. Last year's Glass Blown Open fourth place finisher. Yep. Ricky nice. Wysocki tied Rick. for second. You know, looking looking sharp as per usual. Oh, yeah. Nice belt buckle, Rick. <laughs> we got <laughs> what? We got TV face himself, Eric Oakley. Yeah. He's either watching TV or had no idea we were taking this. Or both. Oh, and look at him go. Oh, man. <laughs> and, and all his splendor, Zach Melton. Oh, that's oh, cute. These two tied last year. That's why they're <laughs> on the card together. Yeah. Moving on to hole one. Yes. 1,093 feet. It's uh, quite the opening hole here at the Emporia Country Club. Anything that lands in the short grass, honestly, is good as long as you aren't stuck behind a tree. You, uh, you yeah. get out to the left side of the fairway. That's the easier side of the fairway to throw your second shot and set yourself up for an easy birdie. You can try and bite off a lot of distance if you want. You just have to make sure that, uh, yeah, you're staying out of trouble here. That's really the only thing you can get into here. Right. There's OB left, OB right. There's some wind. But really what most players are, what they're battling right here is just a little bit of nerves. This is, exactly a, right. this is a big tournament. A lot of people are watching. And... Yeah, in the in the grand scheme of the courses that you guys play too, this isn't a difficult drive. It's open. No, but there's just something about being on the first tee of a huge hole like this that I think kind of baits players into throwing maybe more than they wanted to sometimes. Right. And a decent shot from Rick, way out there, and Simon going big hyzer. <laughs> Shocker. Yeah, B big surprise. He is a little bit pinched on the right side of the fairway, but. Throwing turnovers as well as he does, I think that should probably be no problem. Eric Oakley with the, the statement white pants today. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Nice and bright. And he's going to be nestled up right there with Rick. Just behind Ricky. I assume Ricky probably talked some trash to him about that. I'm sure there's all the trash. <laughs> Zach with his patented 180-degree quick turn back after he's thrown a acceptable shot yeah and he's playing some shade golf not bad it's actually kind of hard to do out here at the country <laughs> club so i'm impressed by his efforts yeah but yeah good good shot for zach on the first that's a great shot on the second anything that crests the hill and continues past you know 150 200 feet uh, you can see just over to the right side of zach's disc is the 250 foot marker uh, to the pin so to the pin, right just have a little bit of reference for how far these guys are getting in two shots Back-to-back -back lucid enforcers for Oakley. I think we'll see that a lot from Oakley. Yeah, they're good. Whoa, and this is huge. It's a towering hyzer. I assume this is a destroyer from Ricky. Thank you. Oh, my goodness. Wow, that's up there. That's, I mean, that's jump putt rate. Like, that's circle Ricky. Yeah, <laughs> right. Yeah. Oh, and another big hyzer oh, from yeah. Simon Lazat. So, I, so cool. I, I said he was going to have to throw turnover, but I forgot about the secondary option of just another huge hyzer. Just an, the, yeah, yeah, just a really big hyzer. Some routine approaches for our competitors here. Zach Melton hmm. throwing justice pretty well there. That's what, you, uh, that's what you like on this opening yeah. hole. A nice, Eric, nice, easy 12-footer. Um, Eric throwing Marshall not not very well. Uh-oh. That's, yeah. uh, that's just yanked right and started right and then yeah no stability at the end that's uh, that's not what you're looking for easy little pitch up for Simon and long putt for Rick here oh wow <laughs> like you said though yes. Rick, Rick range that's right that's how nice must it be to mm. to be that far from the basket and be like yeah maybe maybe I can make it yeah I might, I might as well run it so there that's go. going to be nice, nice, easy birdie for Simon. Relatively stress-free, I would think, too. Yeah. Heiser, 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 and then 15-footer. Yep. And then same for Ricky. I like it. Ricky might even like be slightly disappointed in, in birdie here. <laughs> right. Having yeah. been so close. Well, I guess if you call his his long jump put a Heiser, then, then yeah, same, yeah. same <laughs> kind of approach. Heisers as well. Just heiser, Heiser, Heiser. So we're going to have three birdies and the unfortunate bogey for Oakley after uh, – 
pulling his drive OB right. Sorry, his approach OB right. Right, yeah. So two has a mm-hmm. new T-pad, and that changes the shape of this hole quite a bit. Yeah, the T-pad moved a little bit to the right, and instead of giving us an option of a, well, the sidearm, the power sidearm is still That's right very much there. in play. Yeah. But now for the backhand players, you're either having to throw a, a tight flex line on the right side instead of a big hyzer, or you're having to throw a turnover over OB pretty much the whole way. Yeah, the old T-pad allowed you to kind of take that straight shot and just work it over, but and this is a beautiful shot. That's just yeah. Ricky's made it look like child's play. Yeah, he's he's loving that yellow Huck Lab destroyer of his. And for a moment, it looked like that didn't quite have the turn, but it just held all the way. And mm-hmm. that's, I mean, I wouldn't be surprised if that was an FD. So okay, I could yeah, see that. holding the turn wouldn't really be a problem. For yeah, that exactly. And what do you, and this is Raider for Lucid Raider. Yep. For Zach Melton. Oh, he's going to like it. Yeah. I mean, anything up, anything that's up there past the middle tree in the fairway and kind of, uh, kind of next to the bushy tree looking pretty good. Yeah. And Fusion Raider from Eric. Oakley's told me that's really opened up some new shots for him with Lucid Enforcers. He was kind of having to, uh, you know, force him over on Anheuser. Mm-hmm. to get full flights and with the raider he's just kind of throwing him on hyzer or flat and getting just as much if not more distance yeah which is definitely oh thing. oh my goodness Chill. dang that thing just goes far it was yeah. that fusion raider again it's crushed a little a little squeak on the disc from melton there i don't know if y'all could hear that it's probably a foot fault if i had to guess but i don't you know we're not i'm not on the card so i didn't call it <laughs> Right, new new rule for 2020, no squeaks. Yeah, no squeaking allowed. No foot squeaks. Oh, man. Courtesy violation. <laughs> Simon with a beautiful approach. Back to, back to the hyzers yeah. for, for Lazat. Yep. Un- uncharacteristic for him. And do you know what this, this is for Ricky? Is oink, that a, oink, that thing's parked. Is that a pig? Yeah. <laughs> I used your context clues to figure, out, <laughs> to figure it out. Oh, hey, give it to him. Nice little <laughs> flip in on the left side. Oakley in a Sunday best, but somebody needs to tell him it's it's only Wednesday. It's only Wednesday. Mm. He probably didn't need to step that. No, I think he probably could have stood still, but, I mean, you know, just he, as well as anybody. He could have. He didn't yeah. need to step it. I would have been halfway to the basket <laughs> after releasing. In in the air while it hit the top right, of the basket. Yeah. And it looks like, yeah, Rick went to the wrong <laughs> hole. He forgot to hole out, and he went to the wrong tee pad. And if you think Zach is going to forget that anytime soon, you're dead wrong. Yeah, you've never been more wrong. But great start. Oh, Moving over to hole Sorry, three. Sorry, Zach kind of messed up the star frame. There. <laughs> uh, come on, Come on. Uh, 489 feet. You can play down this middle gap that the drone's flying down right now. Take the forehand around the outside or the huge hyzer around the right side. Uh, this is coming in at a scoring average of 3.21, one of the more Ooh. difficult holes on the course. Not a lot of birdies here. We see a lot of par threes and just the occasional four, maybe five at worst case. Yeah, and the distance says 489. It plays, it's a bit downhill, so it plays closer to four, eh, four, 400, 425, somewhere yeah, in that range. I think that's very fair. It's a smooth forehand from Lazat. Yeah, he has a very good forehand. Now, we were commenting about that, about Eagle yesterday as well. It looks like both of those guys don't even look like they're throwing the disc. And then all of a right. sudden, here it is, 420 feet away, 425, just right. on a smooth forehand. Yeah, and I think that. I think what that boils down to is it's just, like you said, smooth. Yeah. It's very efficient. No yeah. no energy lost. I'm not going to count my chickens at Yeah, and same for, same for Oakley. That's a beautiful forehand. And here's a backhand hyzer for Melton. Nice. Playing it around that tree. Yeah. Pin high probably big. circles edge or so left of the basket. And Eric was saying something about chickens. Yeah. I don't know if you heard that. Yeah, I did. I think it's something about counting his chickens before they hatch, but someone needs to tell him we're playing disc golf. 
Mm. There's not. We don't have chickens out here. Right. But we do have birdies. Well, he doesn't. Yeah. You're right. Oh, but Rick does. Nice putt. Man, you love to see the slow mos There we go. For a second, I didn't, I didn't know if that was going to make it or not. Suspense, uh, Miz. That's two in a row for Zach that are just high. You'd rather you'd rather have that than hitting the cage. There's, I don't know. Right, yeah. They, they both hurt. At least you had a chance for it to go in, but still, to make the same mistake twice, that, that hurts. Right. And a little mini ring of fire. <laughs> from those, those two, two guys. guys. Moving on to hole four. Downhill, 423 mm -hmm. feet. This is uh, just a pretty big hyzer for most of our competitors. Very reachable distance. Yeah. Just like you said, the last hole's 489, but plays 400. I think this plays closer to about 390 or so. Um, the downhill is not quite as drastic, drastic, but you have OB cart path on the left side and then right. OB golf fairway on the right. So really distance control is key here. Distance control, angle control. You're just going to want all the control. Bo staff skills. <laughs> That's yeah. what that sounded like. I got, lots of, skills. I got lots of skills. That's what that sounded like. The scorecard only likes golfers that have good skills. <laughs> Simon Lazad has good skills. He's got decent skills, yeah. A little bit of a disappointing drive for Rick. He came up a little bit short left. This looks real good. Yeah, this is Mango for Oakley. Uh, Yeah. Yeah, I'm gonna unironically ask, is that good? He's gonna like that one. That's that's good. And then for our oh, unfortunate left-handed friends, it's a big forehand. He's thrown something extremely overstable. Interesting. I, it, it doesn't look like Zach was really going for that. Yeah. Oh no. He wasn't going for that one either. Sit down. Okay, that's fine. That's probably no damage done, but it's not a confidence-inspiring upshot. No. Well. It it'll lead to like a it'll lead to a slightly tester putt. So right. after he makes that, he'll feel a little bit better about his putting. That's right. Good strategy, Zach. Yeah. Rick's off to a hot start, four for four. Yeah, that's uh, yes. And it seemed like he was disappointed in his drive, but I mean that was no more than thirty feet, maybe twenty. Again, yeah. Again, it's like oh darn, I got a, I made a good putt. There we go, Zach. Well done. Zach just <laughs> giving, giving Eric a little chatter. Who I, I would love to have been standing there to hear that one. I, yeah. I think they'd really just talk about, like, what they had for dinner last night. Mm -hmm. And chickens, I think. Yeah. Hole 5 is playing a lot easier than it has in years past because we have the tee pad now off of the cart path. Mm -hmm. So that opens up this drive. Uh, a good drive lands either on the right or left side of the fairway. You don't want to be in the middle too close to the trees because it obscures your angle to the basket. If you throw it too far, then you're going to have to combat those down the middle. Right. But most guys are playing for the big right-hand hyzer approach to the basket or left-hand out over the OB golf fairway. Yeah, and with the OB cart path and golf fairway on either side, it really just starts to pinch, pinch, pinch. Yes, it does. The closer you get to the basket. And that's a, that's a great-looking drive. That's Like you said, he was challenging that right side the whole way and didn't go too far. He's going to set himself up with another hyzer. Yeah, and that's, that's just... Knowing your disc there, Rick started that on what looked like Anheuser and just trusted it to come back. Same with Simon here. Same. Those are two, I mean, just picture-perfect drives. Right. If you could walk down and place your disc in a spot that was realistic, well, let's put air quotes around realistic for most people. Those were incredible drives. Yeah. Getting getting up to or and then past those trees, yeah, huge. Yeah. And you can tell Oakley is playing for that left side of the fairway because he favors the forehand for his approach. Mm-hmm. And you can tell Zach is also trying to play for that side of the fairway, but didn't quite commit to it. And so he's going to be pretty much in the dead center of the fairway. Right. Not the easiest approach angle. Oh. He attempts the forehand. Catches a branch. Hard to know if that was a good branch or not, as um, the, the grass on the right side of the cart path is incredibly sticky it feels like it grabs discs and keeps them out of bounds a lot right and then you have this fairway the golf fairway come on now oh wow oakley 
testing that left okay. side. I don't see an OB graphic, so I think he's probably straddling that paint line. Yeah, anytime you're throwing less than you know fairway driver into the screen, you've thrown a monster drive, and that looked like a, a putt and approach disc for Ricky. And this is a yeah a P2, I believe. Yep, something like that. Yeah, spoiler spoiler alert. Um, Ricky and Simon both throw like pretty far. Can I take my fingers out of my ears now? Yes. Okay. Yes. Mm. You know, Oakley just right. Not as much. Not. Not his usual level of commitment there. A little extra wobble. Yeah. Ricky is five for five. Five for five. Just cruising. Making it look easy. IMAX is a process where we can take just about any image and put it on a disc. What about a dog surfing on a pizza? drinking root beer. That's a toughie. <laughs> Actually, no it's not. We can Dimax that. Find out more about all the things that we can put on a disc at dynamicdiscs.com slash Dimax. I demand to know who made that commercial. <laughs> right. How about a... I don't even know. <laughs> These guys, man. How about a crocodile in the middle of hole six playing at 343 feet uphill? It plays closer to 375. Yeah, maybe I, 380. Yeah, that's what I think too. This is playing as the easiest hole on the course for uh, for the MPO competitors today. 2.6 scoring average. Yeah. Uh, we're we're seeing more than half of the field take birdie here. 51% taking birdie. Yeah, it's pretty much wide open. And if you do what Ricky did, um, you're you're gonna get that birdie. <laughs> just just the old pole tapper. That's that's uh, that's well executed. Uh, oh, nice. Follow flight. Yeah, the bunker that he's flying over is really the only danger for our competitors, and most everybody is flying that with these. Yeah, and that's that's what you want. You want to play it over over the green or, or over the bunker. Kind of depends on if you're throwing a a distance driver or right. a fairway driver. I believe Rick was throwing a Firebird, so he doesn't have to swing it out as wide. Mm -hmm. He doesn't have to take it over the green like Oakley and Lazada are doing. So. Yeah, he took more of that direct route so it could direct penetrate approach. forward. Yeah. You could see, yeah, Oakley with the lucid enforcer there, and I'm, I'm sure that's a PD2 from Simon. Um, kind of taking it a little bit higher so that they can just control their distance, yeah. Lefty Heiser for Zach coming up a bit short and left. Yeah, I mean, I, a lot of times I, I get jealous of, of the lefties. You know, they, they get to come out here and just be super oh, creative. Zach! Oh. Let's yeah. go. Look at the focus. He knows it. Right there, he knows it. And the hop and the little little mini gooseneck with the with his with his left hand there as he watches it. Did fall you see in. how luxurious his hair was while he was running to the basket? I did. Sweet birdie for Simon. Nice committed putting stroke. Yeah. Circles edge tester putt. And he passed. <laughs> I like that. There it is. Oakley's in for his birdie. Moving him to two under on the day. And then uh, Ricky doesn't know anything hey. but birdies at this point. Yeah. Oh, star frame. Yeah, first one of the day. Sweet. Hole 7 is also a new tee pad. New tee pad. This changes the, uh, changes the tee shot quite a bit. Most players were landing at this ditch that we're approaching or, or past that. And uh, now that's a very good drive to land there. Correct. Um, you you kind of have to keep it to the middle right side of the fairway to, uh, to open up a pretty easy angle to the basket. If you get too far left, you can be stymied by the, uh, the low-hanging branches of the trees. Yeah, and the drone flyover very quickly went through this tunnel gap here. And that looks perfectly executed. Yeah, this that initial gap is... That's crushed. That initial oh, nice. gap is, it's plenty wide enough. You, you know, you guys throw throw gaps like that all the time. Sure. That low-hanging branch is just enough to get in your head. Yeah. It, it Yes, it gets in your head, but really it's like it's not even, not even a factor because the hole just goes downhill so much. Right. But Oakley doesn't even want to mess with that branch. He, I've practiced with him, and he goes for this even tighter tunnel. Oh, but he hit something else down there. 
And Zach does Zach's the doing same. The same thing. Okay. Yeah, not surprised to see Zach do that. Oh, heads up. Eric and I were talking about this uh, this hole yesterday, and I'm I'm just surprised that anyone who has a right hand backhand doesn't go down the middle because it's just it's a pretty easy shot to throw. Oh, and this is not an easy shot to throw. No, it sure isn't. It's got great turn and good commitment to keep it out over the cart path, but mm -hmm. that hasn't gotten extremely close to the basket. He's probably still, what do you think, 100-ish out, maybe a little bit more? About that, yeah. Zach swinging out the Raider on a huge hyzer. Simon just controls the angle beautifully. Real nice. And that's that's well executed, mm -hmm. 15 feet or so. Uh oh. Ricky with a low release on that forehand. Oh, good skip. He's in circle too. Uh, in years past, this was playing as certainly the easiest par four on the course. It was almost a gimme birdie. Uh, and now we're seeing it play as the 11th Ooh. most difficult hole in the course. So mm -hmm. still a it still feels like if you get off the tee, you should get a birdie. But for some reason, um, we're not seeing... Oh, darn. Yeah, we're not seeing quite the scores that we have in years past. Mm. Yeah, what I've noticed is with that downhill slope off the tee, if you're not controlling the second half of your flight, if you're not trying to get that turn on the disc going downhill, or if you're going downhill and getting the nose up just a tiny bit, it has a tendency to leak left and find the OB over the cart path. Yeah, and which was which was basically stroke. never in play before. Right. Yes. So that's Ricky's first blemish. I mean, like I said, if you can call pars blemishes. Yeah, well, but like we like we saw he threw a pretty much a pretty perfect drive. Yeah. Especially for his game setting up the forehand right. and he just turfed it a little bit. Hole 8 is a new hole here, yeah. combining old holes 8 and 9. This is a par 5, 990 feet. Uh, this is playing as the third most difficult hole on the course, 5.72 scoring average. Yeah, as so. it should. It's it's a toughie. Yeah, it's a it's, bear. Yeah, you're, you're teeing off up high, you're going downhill, and you've got OB left in that dead grass over there. You've got OB right on the cart path. And then the second half of the fairway, you've got a pond, same cart path. It slopes downwards from right to left so it's got all sorts of danger simon lazat going big hyzer again yeah that's surprising big i don't know that's that's that is absolutely the play if you've Just got the sort of control that he does standard hyzer from lazat yeah and ricky looking to mimic that Rick's pushing the left settle. side oh okay he's safe that's good Same for Oakley, a little bit lower than the other competitors. He's asking for that to grab. Mm. It has. Looks like it did, yeah. That's good. Yeah, throwing that big hyzer, the spike angle is going to allow you to you know, play a little bit more precisely, whereas Oakley's, I, he was pretty worried about that skip at that point. That's a good play for Zach as well. The, the second shot sets up really well for Zach. Mm -hmm. because he can push that left side and have a disc that fades naturally into a slope that wants to catch it instead of that wants to run away with it toward the water. Correct. So that's well played. He'll have, honestly, another shot pretty much just like that up to the new basket, which is probably 80 or 90 feet longer than the old. Oh. Well, pardon me. The, the old basket. I wasn't prepared for that. A little, uh, little worm burner for Eric. You hate to see it. Yeah. yeah the worms are going to need to be on their toes today. Simon, Simon with a dead sprint to the right. Yeah, <laughs> Simon threw a shot and then he heard the, what is it, the starter's gun or something? That's right. <laughs> Runners on your mark. Get set, throw, and so, sprint. I'm a little surprised to see Ricky not go forehand here, but he's thrown a beautiful backhand. That is actually past the tree, so he's wide open for his approach to the basket. Yeah, that was a sneaky, stellar shot. Yeah. And this is a not-so-sneaky stellar shot. No. Oh, man. No. That covered so much distance. He'd have had, a, I think, a pretty easy up and down for his four. Yeah. Melton yeah. asking for the skip, getting the skip. Mm. What's up, Birdie? Love it. So after that unfortunate limb catch, here's Oakley approaching the basket. 
Oh, oh baby. That would have been a nice little five. Yeah. Good good yeah. five save. Oh good, oh, 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 good save. Good save from 250. Oh, sweet, man. Nice save. Yeah. P2 approach for Simon. Right up in there. Yeah, not bad. And then is this, uh, this, this pig time again? Yep. Give it a little twirl. Yep. <laughs> Hate the twirl. <laughs> Simon in for birdie. Acting like he's going to slap the air there. Questionable play. Yeah. The air, the air just allowed you to get the, the birdie, man. Come on. Yeah. Air slap. Hey, oh. Ricky in for his birdie, and he's back on the birdie train. Right, and Lazat, he he and Lazat are co-conductors of the birdie train at this point. Co-conductors. Oakland for his bogey six, as we see, we've got a couple of guys through eight holes, yeah, lighting it up out there. Joel Freeman having quite a round. Joel Freeman, same with Chris Dickerson. Yeah, it looked like Emerson Keith was up there as well. That's right. If you haven't checked out the U disc app. You, you got to do it. Yeah, just do it. It's fantastic. Yeah. Brand new hole here, mm. uh, brand new tee at least, hole nine. This is, you're going from the third most difficult hole on the course to the second. 651 yeah. feet. You have to clear that tunnel and land in the grass. So OB cart path to the left and OB uh, basically wooded line to the right. Right. Once you've done that, you just have a relatively routine slash very difficult forehand or turnover up around the corner. Yeah, if this is, well, I would say if this is relatively routine, then you're playing some difficult courses. Yeah, that's right. Because we go pretty far uphill, and the basket is tucked into the right side like nobody's business. That's right. It, yes. I say relatively routine and just. It's a, a really difficult second it's shot. really difficult. This is two. To, to get the three here, you're, you're talking two stellar shots yes. back to back. And this, oh. this first shot is just all about speed control. If mm -hmm. you if you oh, leave yeah. the disc a little bit too high, if you let it leak left, it's so easy for those discs to to get out of bounds. And this is this is pulled right for it, Melton. Well, yeah, he he let it leak early right, and he finds that OB. And I think I think we saw Rick get a little too hot on his, and he just kind of pushed it a little too low, right. and it caught that wood. And mm. Eric, no. Yeah, that's. One of the, I guess, common themes that you'll see for people who execute this tee shot. Whoa, that's a huge, whoa, pardon me. Execute whoa. that tee shot well is that they keep the disc low. You know, if you if you throw it too high, it's really easy, like I said, for that to stay in the air longer than you want and to leak out of bounds. So, Zach, I kind of assumed he would just take the flat hyzer, but that was a huge spike hyzer around the corner to probably 50 feet or so. That's a beautiful flight for Oakley. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's a big shot from there, though. Yeah. For most competitors, the drop zone is basically instant five. Yeah. And and this is a roller? Oh, okay. Sweet. That's headed towards uh, some up. OB. Uh, four. Wow. Catches a little of the tall grass and stays safe. I'm, I'm a little surprised at that play. I, I think he probably could have gotten a P2 or something <laughs> up and around the corner. Yeah. he He definitely could have. He definitely had the ability to get uh, a backhand Anheuser up and around that corner, up to the basket, all the way to the right. But I don't know. I kind of like the play with the D-line FD. That yeah, thing is it. super understable for, for him, especially when he just rips it. And so he plays more of that burnout roller. Yeah. I can dig it. But ooh, to put himself in this nice little tiny corner of OB like that, fortunate. Fortunate. So here's Zach from the drop zone for his four. Oh. Just off the right side cage. Oakley to save par from the drop zone. Oh, oh you love to see it. You just love to see it. Don't you just don't you just love it? Would you would you just look at it? Yeah, when you see a big old putt like that to save par after going OB off the tee. You know what I like to do? You just gotta look at it. You just gotta just look at it. So Ricky's gonna take his second par of the front nine, as will Lazat. No. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah, we're good. Yeah, par's par's a good score on this. Yeah, game. that's not not much of the field is taking birdie here. Exactly. Okay. Hmm. 
Everyone's under par, though. And that's what you want after the front nine. Just super slow-mo catch. Yeah. Dude, with the flip on the rim. Come on, man. Yeah. Style Thanks, everybody, points. for watching the front nine here. First round of the glass blown open. If you're not subscribed already. What are you doing? Yeah, come on. Just get subscribed already. Subscribe here, and then, yeah, let's just let's watch the back nine together. Create an account on YouTube. You know, Gmail or something like that. Just click subscribe. You don't even have to choose like a profile picture. But yeah, click the bottom right for, for the back nine. Let's See do it. There.